Hi guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. I wanted to do a little three-part series on an overview of my setup. And not so much focusing on exactly what products I'm using because, uh, you know, they can be interchanged with whatever, you know, brand you prefer. But more so focusing on where to spend your money. Where to spend a little bit more on maybe a better item that will help give you better results. And then maybe where you don't need to spend as much money. Um, because there's no getting around astrophotography is an expensive hobby. So uh, wherever you can sort of cheat a little bit and maybe not spend as much, but then spend some money and uh, see better results as a re because of that. So on this first part, we'll focus on the base of the setup, uh, the foundation, and you could say, and obviously the foundation is really important because in astrophotography, we're taking long exposures of the night sky. And so during that exposure, you don't want any movement at all. The only movement should be the star tracker tracking the night sky. And so for our first piece, the tripod, this is where I would say spend some money. Um, it's easy to get sort of uh, drawn in by maybe a cheap uh, tripod that looks nice. Maybe, you know, it's $50, $60, $70, 80 And maybe it has a, a weight capacity they claim of 22, 25 pounds. And you're thinking, well, I'm not putting even close to that on with my system. So that should work. And it's not that it won't work. It will. In fact, this is my second tripod. Here's a picture of my first one. Now, we'll, go, we'll come back to this, but um, what I like about this particular tripod and ones like it is that not only is it very lightweight, which is important because um, you want something easy to grab, even if it's just something you're setting up at home, the, the faster it is to set up, the more likely you are to go out and, and take images. But also it's great for travel. You can fold it up, throw it in the car, throw it in the trunk, and it takes a very low space and it's very light. This particular model is made of carbon fiber. So not only is it light, but it's very strong and rigid, which is what you want. There's a little bit of movement you see when I touch it, but that's because I'm on carpet at the moment. And obviously you won't be shooting on carpet. So um, another thing I like about this tripod in particular, or this style, is see this hook right here. This is good when you are maybe positioned on grass or something where it's not as secure as pavement. You can actually hang something with a little bit of weight uh, and that will help give you even more stability. Uh, so that's a nice feature to have. But the number one thing why I bought this tripod and uh, changing over the first one I had is the top here. It's a platform base. Okay. So you can see a picture here of what I'm talking about. Um, the first tripod I bought was very good. It was uh, carbon fiber as well. Not as thick, but still was rated for 25, 30 pounds, somewhere around there. But what I didn't like about it was it actually had a ball head um, on the top with a platform on top of that. And the problem with the ball head is it's great if you're just putting a camera lens on top and, you know, you can easily move it around. And as photography, that's not what we want. We want it to just sort of sit in position. We, we point the, the, star on the telescope on top of the star tracker and then we don't want it to move. And I noticed sometimes when I was setting up, I'd get a little bit of movement in that, um, in that ball head. Even though I had turned it tight, um, what doesn't help is, we'll talk about this in the next uh, part of this series, the telescope I use is, is pushing the weight for this setup. And uh, no doubt that wasn't helping, but still, I didn't like that. Sometimes I'd be setting up and it would actually start to move while I was trying to uh, install the, the telescope. And that not only scares me, because obviously you have an expensive telescope and camera on top, but um, you know that that could be shifting a little bit while you're imaging. And that's going to affect your images. You want, as mentioned, everything to be as still as possible so you can get crisp, sharp stars and images in general. So tripod, definitely something I would say to invest a little bit more money on. Um, I like the expression, buy once, cry once. And um, that's something you'll learn quickly. It's You don't have to go crazy. I mean, there are tripods that you know cost hundreds of dollars, you know, obviously even a lot more than that. And they're rated for like 100 pounds plus. Obviously, you don't need that. This one in particular, I believe, is 66 pounds, which is way more than I'll ever put on top of here. But you do want to go way in excess of what you'll be using. And and like I said, if it has a platform, it has a good weight tolerance, nice thick, if you can, carbon fiber legs, that's what you want. That provides that stable foundation for the next piece, which we'll talk about, which is the star tracker. Now, the star tracker is... Not essential, I'll tell you right off the bat. You'll see there's lots of guys who make videos about just using 
tripod and a camera with the lens. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You can take quality images. Um, especially if you're not sure if you want to get into this, that might be a good way to go. But if like me, you know you want to get into this and it's something you're going to be sinking some time into and a lot of effort, I really highly recommend a star tracker. Um, the reason is because one of the biggest challenges with astrophotography is that we're taking pictures of very dim objects, objects we most we can't even see with the naked eye. So that requires longer exposures to collect that light onto the camera sensor. And for longer exposures, that means we need to keep the camera uh, sort of positioned for 30 seconds, a minute, and one specific part of the sky. And the second biggest problem is that the Earth is spinning. And so as a result, if you've ever tried taking a picture over like 10, 15 seconds of stars, you notice they start to elongate. The longer you go, the longer that sort of line gets to all the way, you can go all the way around. And that's because the night sky is turning around the north pole or position. And what happens with a star tracker is it actually moves in opposite direction to the direction the Earth is spinning. So in a way, by doing counteracting that, you're sort of freezing a target in time, allowing us to take longer exposures. Um, so that's why I like it as well with a tripod. You have to continually move it as, as the Earth is moving to sort of keep up with it. But this... You just position it and it'll be able to run two, three hours easily without having to make any major adjustments. And that's really good as well. So you don't have to come back and check. You know that it's keeping that target. As long as you're polar aligned, which we'll talk about in another video, um, you know that it'll be keeping that target right in the middle of the screen. Now in this case, I'm, I'm using uh, a Skywatcher Star Adventure, um, but there's also a, a Optron Sky Guider Pro, I think it's called. That one works great. There's another one as well top of my head I can't think of what it's called it's a little more expensive it works a little differently but you're only allowed to, you're only able to take two hour um, sessions without having to re sort of start it again which I didn't like about it whereas with this one you can easily shoot especially if you're starting early in the night you'll be able to shoot easily four or five hours with this and it'll keep tracking so yeah that's uh Definitely what I would consider an important piece, not essential, as I mentioned, but if um, this is something you really want to take seriously and invest some time and effort into, I would definitely um, look into purchasing uh, a star tracker like this one. Now, you notice perhaps if you own one of these or if you're looking into it, this base is a little bit different. We'll talk about that in the third part of the series when I talk about upgrades. Um, not essential, I'll just tell you right off the bat, the stock wedge it's called for the star adventure is perfectly adequate and so don't worry about that um, i do use this from time to time it's perfectly fine it's not something that you need to upgrade right away so yeah that's your base that's your foundation and it really is an important part the the star tracker itself you know there's a variety of models they all cost around the same amount of money but um i would again i would hi highlight that the uh, Tripod is somewhere where you do want to spend a little bit more than maybe you th were thinking at first because it's so important. It's a quality piece and um, you want it to be as stable as possible. And that's sort of the beginning of taking really high quality images, even with what I'm considering to be a very simple setup, a starter travel setup. But a good tripod is essential. So that's it for this one. Next, we'll talk about the camera and telescope. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care.